The Nintendo Switch is a gaming console that has proven to be one of Nintendo's most recent successes, making waves inside and outside the reaches of the internet. Despite the successes, there are still major problems with the console and Nintendo needs to work on, and here are my top 5 issues with the Nintendo Switch. Number 5 bending whilst overheating. Like any portable system, Nintendo Switch tends to overheat. It happens with any portable device which has a high processing power that's part of its markup. The Switch itself being portable, but there has been some reports of bending, first being reported by various YouTube and internet sites, and now being reported by mainstream media. Reddit user NSR posted an image of clear bend in the middle, saying that it started to warp while in docked mode. Others soon followed suit and also complained that their consoles have exhibited warping signs too. Fellow user Magna23 claimed his was bending too. I actually checked my switch to see that it started to do the exact same thing. Just not as bad as yours, he posted. The floodgates opened through Twitter, Facebook and other online forums. That being said, Nintendo has offered to repair damaged consoles and replace those that are too far gone. The problem is thought to stem from the fact that when docked, the switch graphical processing unit works harder than in handheld mode, so it runs hotter. And with the dock offering less free-flowing air, to the device, there's a risk that it could overheat and warp. It's not a widespread problem at present though, so there could be other contributing factors to this, such as external temperatures, but let's see what happens and see if Nintendo are able to fix this problem and eliminate it in their next batch of Switches. Number 4 dead pixels. The issue isn't one of Nintendo's taking responsibility for unless it becomes a severe issue. Nintendo are within their rights however to do this as with any portable system dead pixels are a characteristic of the LCD screen and as they are a issue in terms of the LCD itself these aren't a hindering problem. Tested reports that there are dead pixel policies in place by all mobile phone manufacturers these include Apple, Samsung to name a few and thus Nintendo are within their rights unless it becomes a major problem that, for instance, it covers most of the screen. You can, however, go to companies such as Amazon and ask for the system to be replaced. And that can basically solve the problem, even though Nintendo are refusing to deal with it at present. Number three. The left Joy-Con's not working properly. From the release, there were reports that when using the Joy-Con controller wirelessly, characters seem to move on their own, do not respond correctly, and when used wirelessly, the Joy-Con controllers respond intermittently. They appear to lose connection with the console. This tends to happen sparingly, and Nintendo has tried to fix this with an update, but it still happens to many players such as myself, due to the fact when the Joy-Con is covered and tends to lose signal. I believe that Nintendo are still working and addressing the problem, but they haven't yet found a solution so stay tuned. Number two, the screen will scratch when in dock. This has happened twofold, via the docking station itself and also when extremely high temperatures. Secondly, the screen itself is also plastic. Instead of being made of glass like most mobile providers have done with their phones, Nintendo chose to use plastic and thus causes a problem where any nick will tend to scratch the screen. There is a solution however. You can basically purchase a screen protector that can work with the console in order to make sure that the screen is covered and no scratches occur. You can purchase a one one millimeter thick screen provided by Venom. Works with any switch. I've tried and tested it myself and I have not experienced any scratches since that screen has been placed on the system itself. Number one price discrepancies with Nintendo Switch games. Oh Nintendo, how can you justify a game like Puyo Puyo Tetris at a high end of £40 when your competitor such as Sony will sell the same game for $22.99? This is not the only game that's suffering from problems. There are games such as Capcom Street Fighter 2 Ultimate Grandad Action Edition with palette swapped Ken and Ryu selling for £50. And you could also purchase a similar Xbox Live game, which this is a version and variant of basically for £5 now. It's available on the Xbox 360 and there is no reason for this game to have such a high markup. You cannot justify selling these games for such a high end when your competition is selling them for cheaper. Nintendo needs to cater to their fans and give us a far bigger reach. You want to keep the party and show us how your games are the best games for that system and you also want to be competitive because if you don't then fans will go elsewhere to purchase these games even though they'll be sacrificing the portability of your system itself. So what's your thoughts on this? Do you believe Nintendo are working on these ongoing problems or are these issues sparing ones at best? Leave a comment below and as always, let me know your thoughts guys. And this has been Michael Burham for another top 5, just letting you know that I've got gameplay. Have you?